Why does the beginning of spring training seem to soften all the calluses from the season before, no matter how angry and rough they may have been? Why does the opening of a Major League Baseball camp just feel so much more poetic than the initial grunts of football or the first sneaker squeaks of basketball? How does the daily ritual of drills so fundamental and so unchanging rise to the level of a red carpet premiere every time when the setting is just a modest ballpark in Florida and the backfields that surround it like the lesser diamonds of a ring? It's spring, that's how, that's why. Spring is a time before all the metrics and the unblinking focus on the rise and fall in the standings get in the way of the simple beauty of baseball. Or could it be the footprints in the glistening outfield dew left early each morning as men once again turn a children's game into another day at work? Only Braves players are allowed this most direct path from the parking lot at the Disney complex to the clubhouse. They earned it. Or is it the sight of the next generation of Brave intersecting with the team's greatest generation? In the Braves' case, you never know which Hall of Famer may be in the next golf cart to hum past. Bobby Cox, John Scherholz, the newest one, Chipper Jones, walks among the youngsters. Let's see if his gifts can be passed on by casual contact. Uh, if only the uncommon swing could be like the common cold. Might it be the warm Florida sun shining down when the weather back home is still trying to decide how many layers to wear? Or is it the sounds of baseball when it does not compete with the rumble of a crowd or the nonsense noise that will spew from speakers later when the games begin? Noises like the pop of a hard ball thrown into a mitt not quite yet broken in, and the catcher's attaboy that follows the pearly pitch when it hits home, or in the case of the Hawaiian-born catcher, Kurt Suzuki, the occasional mahalo. Joining the percussion section of spring are the cracks from inside the laboratory of batting cages. Ah, there's a singularly loud one. Ronald Acuna must be hitting. Of course, the prospect, the mystery of his youth, the unexplored limits of his little galaxy of talent is fundamental to the enduring charm of spring. Don't forget the dozens of players whose names on the back of their jerseys are but an enigmatic collection of letters. How about catcher K. Savik? That's S-C-I-V-I-C-Q-U-E. They populate the backfields, a baseball in one hand, a dream in the other, and maybe one day the autograph hounds will know their name well enough and will not have to just beckon them by number. Hey, number 80, can you sign? What most separates baseball's annual rebirth from the stirrings of the other games is the pulse and the rhythm of it. It's just lighter and happier than the rest. The Braves have two last springs left inside Disney's borders, where the chief commodity is fantasy, but not to worry. When they move to Florida's west side, there will be plenty of wonder left to go around, because it's spring, not the setting, that matters most.